Structure Chart Example Streaming Service System. The following structure chart outlines the movement of data, processes, and parameters related to using a streaming service such as Netflix, Prime Video, or Disney Plus. So as we develop this structure chart, reflect on your own experiences with a streaming service and see if the logic makes sense to you here. So let's start off now. So usually the first thing I have to do with one of these systems is actually log into the system itself. And I need to enter in my username and password in order to gain access. So the first process that I'll link to here is verifying those login details. Now you can see here I've got my first control parameter here halting the system if I do not get my login correct. So my login needs to be correct in order me, for me to advance into this system. So login password goes in, hopefully it's correct. If it is correct, I can now proceed. Now my use information then will be used to load my user home. That is the first interface I'll see is my user home screen when I enter here. Here there might be recommendations of movies based on my watching habits, okay, or things I've got saved to my watch list or telling me to continue watching shows I've already been watching. So that will be all in my user personalized home. Now, if I decide now I don't have enough time to watch a show right now, I'll probably log out of the system and that will take me back to the login screen, preventing anyone else from getting into my account. They'll have to use their own login details there to get into the actual system there. So the login screen will be back as the main point and people have to start at square one if they want to use the system again and log in and verify just as we did. All right, but let's say I am at the user home and I want to start searching for movies. Well, I've got two main options here for how I do search for movies. I can either actually type in a manual search or I can just browse through the interfaces and see what movies are on offer. So if I go browse movies, well, I'm going to be just using page navigation and being using scroll inputs on whatever device I'm using to navigate the movies that are on offer through the streaming service. If I decide to search for a movie, well, I'm going to have to type in a search criteria and click on the search button in order to find a movie here. Now, from both these interfaces, I can click on home and re return back to the home screen. But what also happens from both these interfaces too is, if I do a search or if I'm browsing navigation, going forward in the system, it's pretty much leading me to the same step because both of them will bring up a variety of movies. And my next step will be clicking on one of those movies and seeing those movies details. So whatever movies I click on, its details will come up and then I can see more information about those movies. Now, if it's a movie and I realize oh, I'm not really interested in that movie, I can click on return and it will return me back to whatever interface I came from. So if I came from the browse movie interface, if I click return, it'll take me back to the browse movie interface. And if I came through search, well, it'll take me back to the search movie interface here. But if it is a movie and it looks like a good watch tonight, you know what? I'm going to watch that movie. Okay, that movie's multimedia data will then be sent through and I can then watch it on my device. Okay, when I say multimedia data, it's audio, it's text, and obviously its video will then be presented on my device there. Once finished, it will take me back to the movie detail interface. Now, the other option I have at this stage too is if I don't have enough time to watch this movie, but it looks like a really good movie and I do want to watch it, okay, I can then add it to my watch list. Okay, and then that movie data gets saved to my library so I can watch it later date. So the movie re record is saved into my library, which I can also browse and then watch the movie stored there at a later time. Okay, and then watch them at a later date there. So I hope this has given you an understanding of how a structure chart can be used in order to reflect a streaming service. Essentially, I have to log in in order to start off and I don't get anywhere unless I do log in and put in the correct login details. Otherwise, I can't access the system at all. I then get presented with my home page and from here I can either browse movies manually or type in a search. Okay, I find movies, I decide whether I want to watch them now and it can be presented to me or I can add them to a watch list and watch them at a later time. And essentially how the whole system is set up in a way that it, it can cater to me and I can personalize what I want to watch there with a few of these elements that you can see on screen here.